So I'm going to be talking about recurring dates today. Um, see John Run on Twitter if anyone is interested in hearing more about recurring dates. This is my blog. The slides will be posted here tonight. You can also find the slides on the GitHub page for IceCube, which is the gem I'm going to talk about today. Not the wrapper, the gem. I know he's gotten a lot of attention lately, but uh, I work at Patch in New York City. Patch is a hyperlocal news startup. It's a, it's a network of websites, about 117 strong in little towns all across America. Uh, the reason that this project started is Patch, as part of its offering, has an events calendar. Um, and often the events calendar on Patch needs to have committee meetings and board meetings. And board meetings often have weird schedules. It's not like every, every Monday, like a soccer game might be or anything like that. Normally board meetings are, are the second Tuesday of the month or the, or the third Sunday or the second to last Monday. Um, and they need to be weird things. And you don't want people to have to go back to the site um, every three months to make sure that they have the next three months of, of board meetings set up in the events calendar. They need to be able to say the, the schedule once and have it exist. So I set to make a gem that would handle date recurrence and notice that there's a lot of problems with dates just in general. In fact, dates are normally a sticking point for any language. Um, often like when a language comes around, it normally has a built-in time and date library that, you know, last maybe a year until people decide that it doesn't do what it's supposed to do or it's too buggy or the interface isn't right. Um, but just times in general have some problems too. Daylight savings times a very common time problem. Also time zones in general. Um, and with them, they're UTC GMT offsets. And what people don't often realize is that different areas of the, of the globe actually have different, obviously, GMT offsets, but also have different uh, times that they jump in daylight savings time and jump during different times of the year. So to negotiate all of the switches between different time zones is a huge issue. And then fucking February comes out of nowhere. <laughs> and it's only got 28 days. So there's, on top of the time problem, there's the recurrence problem, which is basically the first and last Monday of every month. And it seems like a really, problem when, or a really easy problem when humans go to describe it. But when we try to describe it in code, we end up having to or allocate for all the weird time issues. Um, so one easy way to get around that might be to use the date library and just step forward in time the amount of time we have to go, um, second by second, and let the date library handle all the weird idiosyncrasies with time. Uh, that ends up being really slow because you have to step through every second between now and the next occurrence. Um, so you're going to end up with something that's difficult to implement. You're going to end up with code that's really not generic at all. You're probably going to end up with code that's ugly. You're probably going to end up with code that's slow. But most importantly, this just really isn't code that you should ever have to write. There should be a library that allows this to happen. And that's what IceCube is. So here's the GitHub page, github.com slash cjohnrun slash IceCube. On there, there's also uh, a link to the introduction page, which is like a pretty version of the readme. Um, a good starting point for IceCube was actually the iCalendar RFC. You figure that somebody already went through the, the trouble of making recurring dates. And they shouldn't throw away all the work that they've already done because it already exists. Someone can describe recurring dates better than cron, and it's called iCalendar. iCalendar, um, you might have also heard this referred to as vEvent or vCal uh, or iCal, and those are all the same standard. Um, so IceCube actually, in its spec suite, implements every example inside the iCalendar RFC. This is just to make sure that we have coverage with every example that iCalendar would have, which obviously led to a lot of reading. Um, we came out with a really clean Ruby syntax for the entire thing and an awesome name, question mark. This guy doesn't think so, but he thinks that IceCube's pretty awesome. So hopefully by the end of the talk, you'll think the same. I'm going to give a quick example of what using IceCube might look like, just so we can get the idea of what we're headed toward. So you create a schedule. The schedule has a start time. You create a new schedule, and you give it a time that it starts on. In this case, the 1st of 2010 in January. And you attach rules to the schedule. So this rule is just a rule that occurs monthly on the day of the month when it's 13 on Fridays. So this is a rule that describes every Friday the 13th. And then you have methods on the schedule that you can call, like schedule.first10. And as our, you, is our rule a typo or is it our rule? It's our rule. Uh, our rule stands for recurrence rule, and we'll get a little bit more into why it's our rule. Our, our rule is actually a throwback also from the iCalendar spec. If you don't like that syntax, you can also do schedule.add underscore recurrence underscore rule. And that's what it really stands for. Um, so you can see here that 
we, we generate the times. And on the next slide, if you go through the exact same example, you see that iCalendar is actually, or that IceCube is actually negotiating the, um, the offsets as it goes through time. Uh, my 240, spec, or 240 specs run in 1.1 seconds. So this thing's really fast, too. So to talk about rules, rules are really the foundation of IceCube. There are a bunch of different kinds of rules. There's yearly, monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, minutely, secondly. So something like every month would be really simply written, just rule.monthly. You create a new monthly rule. Every other month, rule.monthly of two. This is called the interval in iCalendar. And obviously, every n month is rule.monthly of n. But that's not really interesting, because all you can do is weekly events, or daily events, or yearly events. And they can only start on the date that you want them to start on. So then enters validations. So something like every day, this really simple thing, can become more complicated by just saying, every day when the day is Friday. And you can actually chain them together like I did in the example before. It's every day where the day is Friday and the day of the month is 13. So multiple validations on the same rule form an AND relationship. And you can have as many of these chained onto the rule as you want. These are the different ones. Um, so we'll, get in, we'll, we'll use most of these through the example, but you can pretty much imagine what most of them do. Day is for an individual day of the week. Day of week sounds like it would be the same thing, but it's actually like this day of this week in the month, so the first Friday or the second to last Tuesday. Um, the rest are pretty self-explanatory. So then schedules group rules. So you can make a new schedule that starts now and occurs every day, and you would just do schedule.r rule of rule.daily. But it doesn't occur on days that are Saturdays, schedule.x rule of rule.daily.day of Saturday. So you can combine different types of rules. And this is why our rule and not just rule. Because uh, you can actually have exclusion rules as well as recursion rules. So when you ask if this occurs on today, it does. Uh, this was actually made yesterday. Wait, is that right? Yeah. Uh, so it doesn't, because today is Saturday. And when you ask if it occurs tomorrow, it does, because tomorrow's not Saturday. Make sense? So you can actually also have blackouts on your schedules. You can add R dates and X dates, um, exactly what they, they sound like. An R date is a single occurrence that has to happen. An X date is a single occurrence that can't happen. The order of precedence, because that's probably what everyone's thinking right now, goes like this. And this is directly out of iCalendar. I hope this makes perfect sense. It basically says that. Uh, if I say there shouldn't be a date, there definitely shouldn't. Then if I say that there should be a date, there definitely should. Then if I have a rule that blocks a recurrence rule but should be like exception rules, that those will have precedence. So how we can use some of the ice cube? How am I doing on time here? Uh, how we can start to use ice cube? We can do what we did there, which is does this have an occurrence on a single date? Does it occur on this date? You can ask if this rule occurs at a given time. And you can actually ask uh, if your schedule has a duration. You can actually ask if the schedule has an event that's occurring at a given time. So if the schedule has a duration and you, the time that you query inside of occurring at falls any time within the seconds of the start date of that event, this will return true. And then there's basic expansion. So you could do things like the first 10 occurrences, or all occurrences, or all of the occurrences until a time, or all of the occurrences between two times. Any questions on any of this? Good. Do you have like any kind of infinite on all occurrences? Yeah, there, there is. Um, that's a good question. So rules can actually have, not on these slides, but can actually have until dates and counts. So an until date would be this rule is not effective after this date, but all the other things are. And count is this rule is not effective after it has contributed to a certain number of occurrences toward the schedule. Um, all of the rules have to have either an until or a count in order to use all occurrences. Okay. Um, there is no default. We just stop you from using all occurrences. It'll, it'll throw. Um, I think if you try to call all occurrences, you get like an argument error back. Or maybe, yeah. 
um, Ice Cube also speaks. So you take a rule, and it's a monthly rule, and the day of the week is the last or second to last Friday. Um, first, you have two hash, which is basically just a nice hash-based representation of this. It has nothing to do with any objects at all. So you know how you sometimes call like two hash or two YAML on things, you end up with the objects just marshaled into to YAML. IceCube won't do that, and the YAML representation inside of um, IceCube actually is backed by the hash representation. So you end up with this, not like some crazy, and of course it goes out further. But the representations end up smaller and not dependent on any kind of implementation. Uh, there's also a, a, a port of IceCube called IceCube for P that's written for PHP. So PHP and Ruby IceCube could actually interchange data and not have a problem when other frameworks would have a, an issue with that. Uh, to iCal, I think is easy enough because since everything's based on iCal, I can just uh, generate these. So you get that back. And then just for fun, this is not IATN compliant, but 2S monthly on the second to last Friday. So no matter how many things you add, uh, this will try to generate something. If someone wants to take up a pet project to make it better, that, that would be cool. Are you um, it's, this is all internal, everything. Um, actually, and, and there's, some, there's some places where it'd be really convenient to use like active support calls. And if you have required active support, I'll use the active support calls. And if they're not there, then I fall back on internal ice cube calls. Are you planning on taking, is taking input and translating it the way Tickle does out of I've actually, so I've, I've talked to the Tickle guy. He was actually messaging me early on. Um, and I was saying that it would be cool if, if IceCube were to back Tickle and that Tickle were more just like, like the layer that were to make these things happen. Um, so we talked about that a bit. I don't know if it's going to happen, but, but maybe. Uh, but right now, this is all internal. So Tickle is more just like the date. Mm -hmm. you know? But it would really be cool if, if the Tickle project were to take on recurrence like this. Do you guys have any incompatibility with the dates? Date types, or are you just straight Ruby date types? They're just straight Ruby date types. Um, so internally, everything in IceCube is represented by time, because time is faster than date time, and it can represent times. Uh, and then we also do some, some so if, if you take a time that you have in Ruby, and you're using Rails, and you roll the time into the database, Rails will actually convert it to UTC before it hits the database, which is bad for recurrence, because you lose like, the valuable information inside the start date when you unmarshal it. It comes back out like. So what we do, um, we realize that the date time and time representations of a date are exactly the same. So before we roll it into the database, we actually convert it to a date time, the dates, the internal dates for IceCube. Um, that way, it gets saved still with its time zone. And when you roll it back out, it comes out as a time with zone if you're using uh, Rails. Any other questions on this? What's that? Do you know if the REST guys have considered using this? I don't know. I don't know, actually. That's a good question, though. Um, so schedules can also speak. Uh, so I add an R rule and an X rule to this, and I can convert it to hash, to ham, to YAML. Um, you can convert it to iCal, and it'll actually do like the, the start with the two rules underneath it, and you'll get new lines between them. So this is actually. If you were to embed this directly inside of a V event on your page, if you wanted to have like a send to Outlook, send to iCal, send to XYZ button, you could actually embed this directly inside V event, which is what we do at Patch. And the actual 2S representation on the schedule, we also use that at Patch to display to the user how the thing occurs, um, which is why it would be really cool if someone were to take on the project of making it IATN n compatible, because then when we go to Europe, it'll be an easy transition. So I know that's not the best representation, but yeah. Um, so I wanted to talk about IceCube's magic, like what makes all of this possible and why it's not slow. Uh, so there's a lot of combinations, obviously. And those combinations bring about scary performance implications, just because of the, the sheer amount of things that you would have to do. So we came up with a cool pattern on how to solve this problem. And it involves. Uh, educated guesses, which is kind of, I know that's kind of a scary term in computers, but the way that the educated guesses work is basically every validation uh, that you would put on a rule or every rule um, 
submits basically submits what the closest date that it could happen on is. So like if I'm if I'm a day of Friday, I say the closest day that I could happen is this Friday, the, the upcoming Friday. And then also on the rule, there's a validation that says the 13th of the month, but it's maybe the 20th of the month. So he says, uh, the closest that I could possibly happen is next month on the 13th. Then we just take all of those, take the farthest away one, and jump to that. So you, you skip like all the time in between. And that's how IceCube is able to be really quick. Um, IceCube's usage. So how is this being used right now? So people have events calendars, like we have events calendars. There's actually a project about to start, this open source project, to um, make a single interface that people can use and just drop into their site that backs itself with IceCube. Uh, time notifications. So people are saying, like, I want to send out an email every time that it is uh, board meeting day. People are doing schedule conflict resolution. So there's actually some people that are saying, uh, Tom is only free on Wednesdays, and Steve is only free, uh, you know, every other Tuesday on, or Tom is only free on Wednesdays and Tuesdays. Steve's only free on like every Tuesday. That's the third Tuesday of the month. Uh, you can throw them all together and just call dot first on the schedule, and you'll get the next time that those people could possibly meet. So people are using it for that. You just get nil if, uh, if there's no match. Yeah, if there's no match, you get nil. Um, and first, so something weird about first, just if you call dot first on a schedule. Um, and you give it no argument, it'll actually remove the array from backing it and just give you a single element back. But if you call dot first of one, then you'll get it inside the array and outwardly. So that's a little weird. Um, some, some people are making uh, this cron monster thing where basically like you, you would schedule your tasks with, it's kind of like whenever, but a little bit more complicated. So you'd schedule your tasks with IceCube. And then basically they just they tear through the ice cube schedules to see when things should happen. So it's like a monster thing. I don't even know if it's a good idea, but they're doing it. Um, so I challenge all of you to also make something awesome and let me know what you do with it. Because I think the library uh, is really powerful. And it tackles a, an area that I, I don't know, you probably wouldn't touch ever. Um, this is my blog. I just want to I want to use this time for questions and if uh, maybe a demo. If, if anyone's interested. So any questions about the whole thing? What do you guys think? Yeah. It's kind of open-ended. I don't know yeah. how much of a question it is, but I'm processing tons of series data out of RRD files. Um, an interface like this would be just freaking awesome. Uh, I'm wondering, I mean, what would your thoughts be? Of, I guess you know, it's a database, right? It's right. That would be, um, so everyone heard the question, I, I guess. Um, so I think, so some people when they use this are, are directly querying IceCube schedules. Other people are actually expanding the dates and then having those sit in kind of like a denormalized format off to the side so they can query it easily. Is, is querying is something you have to do like often, being able to easily query against all of them? I think that would be a really, really cool application of this, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? No, go ahead, please. No, I don't, I don't think it would. I, I think this would be a fair application. And I also think that, like, so there's, there's a lot of convenience methods built into IceCube that allow you to, to query it in ways that we didn't show here. For example, like, if you, if you do a month of year and you have to say July and August, like, you can also represent those as, as integers. Um, I, think that, I think it would work totally fine. And I think that it, it's natural. Um, so there's also this concept of, of 
adding schedules to schedules that people have been using IceCube for. And I think you would have to do some of that. So like you have two schedules and you're basically querying occurrences across both of them at the same time. People use that if they need events in different schedules that have different durations. So we, sh we should talk more about how that integration would go. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Intersection or union of multiple rules. So if, if you just el elaborate a little bit more. If you have two rules. Yeah, two rules and one of those. Yeah, absolutely. So if you put, um, <coughs> so there's definitely intersection, right? So if you, if you add two R rules to the same schedule, it'll give you all of the dates that occur on any of those R rules. But you can't, so if you want all of the things that occur when all of those things are happening, you would accomplish that with a single rule that has all of the attributes that you would have put on the multiple rules. So validations on, on a single rule form an and relationship, and validation, or multiple rules on the same schedule form an or relationship with each other. Right. Yeah. Yep. And you could also accomplish that with multiple schedules and use any or all with the schedules. So. What's your internationalization support in terms of the time zones like? Like what's your source for Yeah. Um, so so the, the built-in time library in Ruby uh, only supports local or UTC. Those are the only two things that it can do. Uh, time with zone in Rails inside of active support. Um, allows you to do like in time zone and use any time zone that you want. So if you're using time with zone, the support is there um, and it's fully tested and fully compliant across all of time with zone. So you can use it with any time zone you want and it'll auto negotiate like passing through time zones or uh, you can even have like end dates on schedules or inside of repeat rules that are in different time zones and it'll, it'll do all of that. Uh, but if you're using the standard time library, you only have access to what Ruby has access to, which is local and UTC. Um, but you could also just convert everything to UTC first. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, people have been thinking about, uh, I don't know if anyone's done it successfully, but I don't understand why they wouldn't be able to, integrating this with third base and home run, one of the two. Uh, so you get an even better performance out of IceCube if you were to use a separate time library. So if, if anyone doesn't know, Home Run is a time library that was written uh, in pure C. It's a lot faster than time.rb is. So. Anyone else? Any other questions? OK, yeah? Well, you create a rule that says first Monday after February 14th? Or like yeah, OK. So the first Monday after February 14th. If you were to do the first Monday uh, <laughs> after February 14th, you would have to set the start time to be February 14th inside the schedule, and then add a rule that said uh, every Monday, and then just call dot first on the schedule. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned one of the examples of like send an email out about a board meeting. Yeah. For example. So is it possible to create a rule where essentially you want to do a, you know, the first occurrence event would be before a certain date? Like I want to get notified three days before the board meeting, right? So like the end date is the board meeting date. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you want, you want, okay, three days. Because you got to get notified that you've got to prepare for the board meeting. Right, right, right. Um, I guess you could have, yeah, I guess you could have two schedules. And, and what also you could do is like, you know the date is going to be like the third Wednesday of the month, right? Right. How's it go? That's a good question. You go three days before that, yeah. Right, because there's no way to negotiate what the beginning of the month would be, so you can't just say, like, send it out on the Monday instead. Yeah. yeah. Um, can say, like, make negative three somewhere, uh, just change something, one of the arguments is minus three. Huh. What you could do is just calculate the occurrences as if it was the event, and then just subtract three from all of the things that it generates. Subtract, like, minus three, three days. Right? And then you know if it's in, inside that occurrence set that you should notify. 
I know that's kind of like a hack, but yeah. Uh, iCalendar doesn't support that by itself. So. And we really tried to like not go outside the bounds of iCal just because the two iCal method is really nice to have. So, like one thing I wanted to do for the longest time was support, rather than having to maintain multiple schedules for different timed events, I wanted to support different durations for different rules. But iCalendar can't do that. So I didn't do it. Okay? Yeah? No? No one else? Where yeah. are your slides? Uh, my slides are located at cjohnrun.github.com slash icecube. So this is a page that's set up for it. And if you go straight down to the bottom, the slides are right there. And there's also like an introductory deck that I used at Ruby NYC a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, this is actually what we do at my job. So the fact that all of these methods like day, uh, dot day validation can actually take integers instead of just symbols makes it really, integrate, really easy to integrate with front-end code. So you have basically like a 0 through 6, and the values are 0 through 6 for the selections of what day, or 0 through 7, of what day this thing should happen on. And then when it comes back, you can push that right into the rule. And then when you store this, this entire structure, the schedule, dot two YAML inside the database, you can easily pull it out and query it. Uh, some people choose to form, uh, store like a basic denormalized form separate of it so that they don't have to pull all of these out and uh, recreate the schedules. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah? So maybe the next, the next method to add would be to cron? To cron? That would be awesome, yeah. <laughs> if you could like install an ice cube schedule? Yeah, that'd be sweet. That's actually, can you, can you submit a ticket for that? Yeah. There's, a, there's a lighthouse account. Uh, that'd be great, yeah. And it wouldn't be that hard either. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. the, the one fallback of it is like if people use things that cron can't do. Right. Right. Right, well, yeah, the other thing would be if you're using cross platform too, because cron's only for Unix. Yeah. How would you execute stuff on a, say, .NET server or something? Yeah. That would be the other problem. I'd say like wipe the hard drive and reinstall. <laughs> <laughs> Does it use what? Like, how do you keep the time zones up to date? Yeah, so um, I use a zone info database that's tied to uh, time.rb. So it actually, date.rb, I think it's in date.rb, but they have um, the basic time zones there. They just don't allow you to, like, create one in the different time zone, which is really weird. Like, time.rb can completely handle zones that are not your own. It just doesn't expose that method. It doesn't expose, like, switching time zones. It just doesn't do it. And uh, I used all of that for when I marshal the times back into iCal, you actually have to put like the like, string representation of, of that time zone. And I use time.rb for that also. And can it handle custom ones? Uh, custom time zones? Yeah. Like we just have file sudden or whatever? Yeah, I mean, like what custom time zone? Mars. What? Mars. Mars? Yeah, if you wanted to add Mars, um, I guess you could. <laughs> yeah. Mars is in the eastern daylight time. I've been there. Mars is wherever, wherever the Earth lines up with Mars at that point. It's in Pennsylvania. Just place it. It's in Pennsylvania. <laughs> so, uh, I kind of forgot about this comment about having a bit more schedule and notification three days over. Um, yeah. For me, it's just kind of a Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's actually, um, I have a prototype branch just completely local on my machine that does from iCal, which I think would be a huge addition to this whole thing. Um, then you can just take that iCal database that you're talking about, run them all through as rules, and have, like, is today a holiday? Yeah. Which, I mean, that's a like really cool use case. The best one I've found so far is from the iCalendar RFC. It's uh, um, American Election Days. So every four years, I think it's like the Tuesday after the first something in November. Um, and it can do that totally fine. So. Just, just calculating Easter. Yeah, how, how do you calculate the first Sunday following the first full moon following the birth? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't do moons. 
Yeah. Easter would be tough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's there's a whole bunch of I, I can't do moons obviously, but the the tricks that you have to employ like to do like the in, or um, the election day, you basically like you have to say. You can look for the example online. <laughs> it's pretty. Actually, I could even show you it. To do to do what? Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me show you this code uh, for the this thing. What's that? Oh, yeah, I, I will. So there's RFCs back here. So this is the presidential election one here. So every four years, the first Tuesday after a Monday in November, after the first Monday in November. Um, so you create a schedule. Uh, in this case, I had it start in 1996 because that's from the RFC. You had a recurrence rule. The way the recurrence rule works, month of year November, the day is Tuesday, and the day of the month, so this is like one of these tricks I'm talking about to use an iCalendar, the day of the month is one of these. So you're basically saying like exactly what, what the rule says. Couldn't you use a range there? Or yeah, you, you, can use, range you can use a range there, sure. Right, yeah. OK, yeah. Yeah. These two so this is one of one of two things that is in our calendar that isn't in Ice Cube right now. Uh, there's that the, the business days one, and there's also by set pass. Um, by set pass is it, it's obviously by set position. It basically says like I want the fifth occurrence that this thing would happen on, but none of the other ones. Right. Is there a gen called business time or business? There is. Time? Yeah. And this is actually business time was featured alongside Ice Cube on. Uh, Ruby 5. So, yeah, business time does does that. But the, it doesn't do all the other stuff Ice Cube does. And there's also, there's another gem that does something like Ice Cube does. It's called, uh, I think it's like Rocket Recurrence or something. But the way that they do it, I'm just going to type code up here. <laughs> the way that they do it, they'll do like add rule daily. And they'll do like this inside of a string. So it's like your string programming, and this represents the actual days of the week, what day this thing should occur on. And that's how this whole thing started. We went and saw that, and we're like, this is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So uh, thank you for having me in Austin. It's a great city. Uh, if anyone has any questions or wants to talk more, or wants to follow me on Twitter or install IceCube, do it. <laughs>